The thing is, no matter how good your traffic is, no matter how targeted your website visitors are, you are not going to have a 100% conversion rate and it becomes your job to be remembered. What's up everybody, Anton here from dropshiplifestyle.com and welcome to part two of our Shopify marketing series. Now, if you missed the first episode, I'll put a card up in the top corner of the screen you can click it, definitely check that one out first. That one is called How To Be Seen. And the goal of that video is to show you how to actually get website visitors when you launch. Now, we talked about how to get extremely targeted website visitors, which is obviously important. By targeted, I mean people that actually want what it is you are selling. But the thing is, no matter how good your traffic is, no matter how targeted your website visitors are, you are not going to have a 100% conversion rate and it becomes your job to be remembered, to have all of those people that don't buy on their first visit to come back and place an order on your store. And today's episode is called How To Be Remembered, where I'm gonna be showing you exactly how we do that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and switch screens and get this episode started. So when I say how to be remembered, what I'm really talking about is the follow-up, right? Because if you're selling products, again, like we do, the way people are gonna find you is by searching for those products, not typically by searching for your specific store. So what that means is if they leave without buying, when it comes to them trying to purchase this product again later or doing more research, they will simply go back to Google, type in the product name and click whatever link they see first that looks good to them. So it's our job to pretty much automate the follow-up from when people find us until when they buy. So what I have on the screen here is just the Dropship Lifestyle merch store. It's where we sell merchandise from Dropship Lifestyle. Sounds pretty self-explanatory, right? And the first thing I wanna talk about is what to do to set up the frameworks so that you actually can be remembered. And by that, I mean the back end of what's gonna power all this. Now, you just saw the first piece of it when I moved my mouse and went to exit out of the screen. And what you see here is an exit intent overlay. Now this, for us, is powered by Klaviyo, which is the email autoresponder that we use to follow up with people. Again, it's called Klaviyo, and what I'm gonna do under this video on YouTube is post a link here. This is showing how you can integrate Klaviyo with your Shopify accounts. Again, we use this for email collection and for email marketing. It is paid. I think they give you 500 subscribers on your email list for free. But at the point in time where I am recording this video, they have the deepest integration with Shopify and it works extremely well. So I would highly recommend you use Klaviyo to capture and email leads. And again, we use it there for an exit intent overlay. And then if you go to our footer right here, you'll see we also do gift card giveaways and we collect emails there as well. Now, in addition to getting Klaviyo set up, you're gonna wanna make sure you have Google Analytics installed on your Shopify store. This isn't a walkthrough video of how to do that, but I'm gonna link below this video to this page on Shopify's support center that literally walks you through exactly how to do it. It is not complicated. Even if you're brand new, you should get this done within a few minutes. And the other thing you'll wanna do to have the frameworks in place so you can follow along with the rest of this video is make sure you have the Facebook pixel installed on your Shopify store. Again, I'm not gonna walk through how to do that. I am just gonna link here to Shopify's documentation on exactly how to do that. So with that being said, let's go ahead and jump into what you should actually do when you have the Facebook pixel installed on your store, when you have Google Analytics installed on your store, and when you have Klaviyo installed on your store. We'll switch screens again for this one. All right, so sharing my screen again here so I can draw out exactly what I want you to do to be remembered. And I'll just apologize in advance for my terrible handwriting and drawing skills. I've, uh, I've accepted that they are what they are and they're not getting better within my lifetime. So hopefully this still all makes sense to you. Now, what we have in the middle is your Shopify store. We talked about this in part one of the Shopify marketing series and where we're sending people from traffic, Google ads and organic Google traffic is going to be our product pages. So where people can just go and buy. But again, what do we do to be remembered for all the people that leave without purchasing, which will probably be about 97.5%. So 
hate to break it to you, but the majority of traffic. Now, I just showed you on the Dropship Lifestyle demo store a couple of things that we do to collect email addresses. So what we'll do here is draw this out and we'll go through these one by one. So on our store, we are collecting emails from our potential customers, and we're doing this a few different ways. One of them, like I showed you, is the exit intent overlay. And this is designed to basically pop up and fill somebody's screen if they're going to exit out of the page. We have that appear. So we do exit intent overlays. We also do gift card giveaways in our footer menu just an additional way to collect email addresses. Now there's a few more things that we do just kind of by default, like things that everybody should be doing, but we have abandoned carts. So people that are leaving without buying, they're filling out step one of the checkout process and not step two. And then obviously we have customers, when people buy, they enter their email address during the checkout process. So for collecting emails, we have multiple methods of doing so here. Now, we'll talk about what to do with them eventually, like in the end of this video, but for now, I just want you to know these are some of the primary ways we're actually collecting email addresses on our stores. And again, the reason we can do this is because we're using Klaviyo. So you can do it with other email autoresponders as well, but we do this through Klaviyo being integrated with our Shopify stores. Now, another very important thing that we do and that I want you to do, the reason I told you to install the Facebook Pixel and Google Analytics on your store, is so you can start, even from today, building audiences that you can remarket to, people that can remember you. Now, at this point, you don't need to spend any money or you know create any ads. Don't worry about that yet if that worries you. But what I want you to do for Facebook and for Google, we create the same audiences for both of them. So I'm just gonna kind of put them all in one section so I don't have to write these out twice. But we create audiences based on website actions. Now for our Facebook audiences, we create them in Facebook Business Manager. So that's where you'll create yours. And for Google, we create the audiences inside of Google Analytics. So that's where you can create yours. And by the way, I'm just gonna say this now before anybody gets super overwhelmed or anything. The purpose of this three-part Shopify marketing series is really to be here as a high-level overview for anybody that runs any type of e-commerce store. Like anybody should be able to follow this and start to get results and not just sit around for a year and wonder why they're not getting sales. But if you want the full step-by-step -step trainings on this, you know, the apps we use, how we sync them up and everything like over the shoulder, that is all taught in the Dropship Lifestyle Dropship Blueprint specifically in module six. So if you're watching this on YouTube and you're a member of Dropship Lifestyle, just go into module six and watch the lesson on remarketing. If you're not a member yet and you're interested, I'll post a link to dropshipwebinar.com. You can get a free training there from me. Plus I make a special offer if you want to enroll in the Dropship Blueprint. So keep that in mind. Uh, with that being said, the audiences that we create and that you should create as well. And again, we're putting these in one bucket, even though it's two different platforms, they're the same audiences that we create on either or. And the first is an audience that we call seven day website visitors. Now we keep our naming extremely simple, so I don't think I have to really explain what that means, but it is people that have been to our website within the past seven days. So by creating this audience and defining the rules of who should be in it, on Facebook Business Manager and inside of Google Analytics, as soon as we create this, this audience is going to begin dynamically populating. So for example, if I set this up right now on the Dropship Lifestyle Merch Store, and you go to the Dropship Lifestyle Merch Store, and you visit the website and then leave, you will now be in my seven-day website visitor audience for Facebook and Google meaning if I wanted to run ads to you, I could, because you're within this audience. Now on day eight, if you didn't come back to the website, you would no longer be in this audience. You would fall out of it because it dynamically populates based on seven day website visitors. Now, the next ones we create that I encourage you to create as well, Facebook and Google, first is 30 day website visitors, same thing, people that have visited your website in the past 30 days. And then 60 day website visitors. Again, don't think I need to keep explaining, but people that have been to your store in the past 60 days. Now, one more audience at a minimum that I think everybody should have is seven day purchased. 
And you'll see how this all works together in just a minute. But seven day purchased means they literally have bought something on your store. They've completed a checkout in the past seven days. Now I'm gonna just highlight a couple of these things here, customers and seven day purchased. So you might be thinking, well, Anton, the purpose of this lesson is how to be remembered. So the people that don't buy right away come back and buy. Why am I making audiences of my customers? Well, there's a few reasons. Uh, one of them will hit on big in part three of this series. It's gonna be called how to be loved. But for now, you have to know that we're creating it to use as an exclusion. Okay, I'll explain what that means right now. So taking it back to the fact that we're gonna have about 2.5% conversion rates, that means if 100 people visit your store in a day, 2.5 of them will buy and 97.5 of them will leave without buying. So the reason we're creating these audiences is so that we can send people back to our stores without them having to somehow magically click our link again, because most people are not going to remember you. Again, because of how a lot of our traffic comes in up here in the beginning of the funnel, it's people searching for specific products. And if they're maybe thinking about buying that product today, leave our store and then tomorrow think, you know what, I might buy it then, they're gonna search for it again and they might not click your link again, right? For whatever reason. So it's our job to use these audiences to get people back. Now, when it comes to why we build three different audiences down here of website visitors, seven day, 30 day, and 60 day, it's because of a simple concept called recency, meaning the more recent somebody has taken an action on your website, the more likely they are to come back and finish it. So when you're setting up your ads to get people back to your store and you're trying to get them to remember you and you're creating different targeting options, you should create a targeting option for seven day website visitors, right? Right here. And you should expect that this one is gonna have the best return on ad spend. It's gonna be the one that makes you the most money because these are the people that have most recently been to your store and not placed an order. But again, why did we even create an audience of seven day purchasers? It's because if somebody just bought from us, we don't want them to go to Facebook or go to Google and then see an ad saying, hey, come back and buy this item again. So when we make our seven day website visitor audiences and we're setting up ads targeting them, we're actually using seven day purchased as exclusions. So if they bought from us, they will not see these remarketing ads. They won't be getting sent back to our product pages. Now I'll demonstrate this at the next level again, which would be 30 day website visitors, right? Right down here. So when we are making an ad and we're targeting, meaning having the ad show to 30 day website visitors, we are excluding, I'll do this in red, we're excluding seven day purchased and we're also excluding seven day website visitors. What that means is in your Facebook ads and your Google ads for your dynamic remarketing, for your 30 day website visitor audience, it's only going to show to people that are between eight and 30 days out from visiting your website and it's going to exclude customers because we're using those as exclusions when we are setting up these ads. And again, we do this on both Facebook and Google. That way, if anybody goes to facebook.com or Instagram or any place where Facebook has ad placements, they'll see us through the Facebook ads and we do it through Google. So if somebody's on any property where Google can advertise, they will see us there as well. This is how we make sure they do not forget about us. Now, going back to emails, what we do with these emails that we capture through all these various sources is pretty much the same thing. Instead of though, just sending them one-off emails, just randomly like, hey, did you finish your order? As a manual email, we build sequences that follow up that get people to come back and buy. But we do the same thing where we exclude customers from promotional emails. So let's just say you're watching this video and it is right now the end of January and you have people that are abandoning carts and people that are opting in for your exit intent overlays and you're building up an email list. Well, it would be a great idea if in the beginning of February, you sent out an email promotion to all of your email leads, but excluded your recent customers. That way, all of these emails you've been building up can come back and buy. And when it comes to abandoned carts, this is one you should have something always going out. In Klaviyo, it's known as an email flow. 
And what that is, is a series of emails that gets sent out after the abandoned cart takes place, sending them back to complete their order. So between all of this, right, you have, like we talked about in part one of this series, you have really highly qualified traffic coming from Google ads and Google organically. Even with that though, you know they're not all gonna buy because unfortunately, 100% conversion rates are not possible. But when they're there, when they're on your store, you're making the most out of it. You're trying to capture their email address. You're installing the Facebook analytics code so you can build remarketing audiences. You have your Facebook pixel on your store so you can capture them that way and be able to remarket on Facebook and Instagram. And then when they leave, if they're not a customer, because you exclude customers, they're automatically going to be able to see ads linking them back to exactly what they were looking at when they're on your store. This is going to be one of the most profitable types of ads you ever run. Your return on ad spend is gonna be higher, again, with your seven day website visitor audience than with anything else. These numbers are just like silly how high they get. That's why for anybody, if you're running an e-commerce store and you're thinking, how do I get people to remember me? This is how. I can go a lot more advanced than this. I can show you a million different ways. But again, for the purpose of this YouTube series for Shopify marketing, from a high level overview, if you set up these three things, you will see better results with your Shopify store. I can almost guarantee it. There's no reason this wouldn't work unless you mess up the install or your ads just don't look great at all and don't connect with your audience. And by the way, if you want like a full training, step-by-step -step how to do this over the shoulder, go to Dropship Lifestyle in the blueprint in module six, go through the Google Ads training and the remarketing training. And if you're not a member of Dropship Lifestyle yet, you wanna learn more, I'm gonna link up dropshipwebinar.com in the YouTube video description where you can get a free training from me and a special offer to enroll in the Dropship Blueprint. So that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. Hope you got value as always. If you did, do me a favor, give the video a thumbs up, leave a comment below, make sure you subscribe and click that notification bell. That way you can be notified as soon as part three of this series comes out, which is called How to Be Loved. How to make sure when people buy from you, they have a great experience, they tell their family, they tell their friends, and they buy more. So get subscribed and you'll be notified as soon as that episode releases. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate you and have a great and profitable week.